free, says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And that's my desire this week, as Brother Ryan preached yesterday morning. If we cry out to him, he hears, comes into his ears, and he hears our cry. And God told us through the prophet here, if we'll call unto him, he will answer us. Not only will he answer us, he'll show us great and mighty things which we've not ever seen before. I'm looking forward to that this morning. Worship this morning with Brother Noah as he comes to sing. What the mercy of God can do If you knew me then You'd believe me now He turned my whole life upside down He took the old and he made it new That's just what the mercy of God can do now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome it's the goodness and mercy and the power of his blood I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood so much power in the blood oh I thought I deserved oh to be sick feet beneath the earth for all the things I've done the things I've said the choices made that I regret oh I would still be lost but for the mercy of God now I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome It's the goodness and mercy And the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom It wasn't based on what I've done But the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood the power of the blood there's power in the blood power in the blood and was the cross meant for me that my Savior carry Now I've been made free By the mercy of God And was the grave meant for me Where my sin lay buried Oh, I stand redeemed By the mercy of God And was the cross meant for me Read my Savior carried, oh, I stand redeemed by the mercy of God. And was the grave meant for me, there my sin lay buried. Now I stand redeemed by the mercy of God. It 
wasn't based on what I've done But the goodness and mercy And the power of His blood But the goodness and mercy And the power of the blood Thankful for his mercy this morning. Can just lift your hands. Praise God that you have that testimony of his goodness and his mercy. There's still power, wonder working power, and the blood of a lamb. I'm so thankful this morning. As I hear my son singing those words, knowing his testimony, that's that's just powerful to me today. Brother Brian, there's nothing like seeing your kids doing ministry. You know that feeling. I love that to know that both of my kids are involved. In ministry, I've seen so many pastors' kids get bitter and run after they turn 18 and after they graduate, but I'm glad to know that mine are involved and praying each day for them to continue to be involved. What a powerful message in a song this morning. Appreciate that, Noah. This time, the Whitley family is coming to minister to us today. They're going to minister in song, and Brother Brian's going to come and share his heart once again today. Let's just get in with them. What a powerful beginning yesterday. Let's don't lose that momentum. Let's just keep flowing with the Spirit. I feel a sweet presence of the Holy Ghost here this morning. Wanted to help and touch hearts and lives. Worship with them today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful that the blood still has the power? Amen. Aren't you thankful that the blood has not lost its power? Amen. Appreciate Brother Noah coming and ministering in song with us in the morning time. I know he's worked last night and he pushed through to get here this morning. But you know what? That was a precious song to me. I remember where he brought me from. Come on, anybody in the house remember where he brought you from? I remember when that blood touched my life and how it changed me. Amen. I remember the burden that was on me and the chains of sin that had me bound. And I remember that moment that that blood touched me and it changed me. Amen. Anybody in the house remember the precious blood? Amen. Folks, we've got something to shout about. Amen. We've got something to give God glory about and to be thankful for. Amen. Worship with us this morning. His darkest just before dawn. This might be the hardest season you've experienced. Well, I know it hurts, but it won't be too long. You're closer than you think you are, closer than you've been before. Your help is on the way. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. Oh, it's only the beginning. It's not over. It's not finished. moving it's turning around your season is changing and everything looks different now cause here comes the sun it's piercing the clouds you're closer than you think you are closer than you've been before to the sky your help is on the way it's not over it's not finished it's not ending oh it's only the beginning it's not over it's not finished 
is turning around your season is changing and everything looks different now cause here comes the sun it's piercing the clouds you're closer than you think you are closer than you've been before so look to the sky your help is on the way it's not over it's not finished it's not ending oh it's only the beginning it's not over it's not finished it's not ending oh it's only the beginning when God is in it all things are new when God is in it there is no limits when God is in it. Oh, it's not over. When God is in it, there is no limit. When God is in it, it's not over. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that there's no limit to God? Amen. Hallelujah. There's a limitation to you and I. There's a limitation to, to what our family can do, what our friends can do, what our best pal can do. There's a limitation. They can only go so far. But there is no limitation to God. Amen. And when we put our faith and trust in Him, I promise you He'll come through every time. He'll help us. Amen. What an honor it's to be with you. Appreciate uh, Brother Jamie for asking us to be a part of this. Amen. We have been looking forward to coming and, and sharing what God has poured into us so that we can pour into those that are in the hearing. Amen. And I appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the opportunity to preach his word. Amen. I, I, I told God about seven, almost eight years ago when he called me to preach, just been preaching a few years I, I remember at the altar at the at the uh, youth camp that we was helping out in, and uh, the man of God preached that night about you've got a message to carry, and I'm down there in the altar, and I'm thinking, you know what? These young folks, God's going to call them. He's going to help them, and I'm praying for them, and we're having a glorious time, and it's about 11 o'clock, I think, at night, and God said, son, I'm calling you, and I about had a heart attack. <laughs> I was, what? He said, no, son, I'm calling you. I fell in that altar, and I stayed there a good while. Amen. And I'm tell you what, the Lord has helped us. He's blessed us. He's moved, and not because of who we are, but because we said, Lord, I'm willing. Amen. I, I can't lie to you and tell you that, uh, that I just stepped out and started. No, I wrestled with that thing. 
As a matter of fact, that following month, Tammy's cousin here in Hastings called me and said, Son, I want you to come preach. And I said, I can't preach. And the Lord checked my spirit. And he said, I don't care what you call it, just come do it. And so it took me to January of the following year to make it to Hastings, Florida, to preach my first message. And Sister Tammy shared with somebody last night at the table, said when he preached that first message, he didn't realize that he was preaching to himself. And I'll never forget that message the Lord dealt with my heart. And it was about Jonah. And the title of my message was, At What Cost Will You Do Nothing? Jonah paid that fare to go in the opposite direction from what God called him to do. And I'm telling you what, since that day in January, almost seven, eight years ago, I believe it was this coming January, I tell you what, I have made up my mind, Lord, whatever you do, whatever door you open, that's where I'm going to go. I'll be obedient to you. And he's opened the doors and he's helped us and he's blessed us. And it's nothing that I've done, but glory goes to him. Glory to God. Amen. If you got your Bibles, you want to read with us 1 Samuel chapter 17. We'll look at verses 38 and 39 and then we'll preach. Got other uh, chapters and verses we'll look at, but this is what I want us to start with. Felt, felt God dealing with us last night. I had another message that I was looking at, but just kept something just didn't feel right. And I don't know, you ministers know what I'm talking about. You just have to hear the mind of God. And it's, there's some things that we like to preach and we would like to preach some of the good ones that we've kind of held back and say, you know what? That'll be for a good time. But I'm telling you that you better be obedient to God. He knows what's going on. He knows who will be in attendance. And we better be yielding to the Lord. So this is the direction that I felt the Lord carrying us uh, almost about midnight last night. And I, I, I want to be obedient to God. And so if you will, pray for the preacher this morning. I need God's touch. I need his help. And we're just going to rely on the Lord. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost have his way in this service this morning. For somebody needs help. And I don't know about you, but I'll take your blessing if you want to leave it here. I brought my Holy Ghost wheelbarrow and I'll roll it out of here. If you don't want it, I'll take it. Because I don't know what tomorrow holds and I need whatever God's providing for me today. Amen. He knows ahead of time what me and you are going to face this afternoon when we go through that intersection and we don't see that other car or that other driver. He knows exactly what we're going to face. Amen. A, a, a young man in our church is helping me with, with the announcements and all. He said Sunday. He, the Lord just laid it on his heart and I, I'm glad he shared it because it excited me that people begin to notice the things that God is doing in their life. How there's small fingerprints all over. When you look back on your life, you say, my God, I see your hand print on that and how you turned that around how you met my need in this situation and how you protected me here he said I got to thinking about it the other day how that we never know when we get in a struggle in the morning time we go through traffic we get aggravated and we wonder why is it taking me so long to get to my destination maybe it's the hand of God he's protecting you and I from an accident that we're about to get involved in but yet his mercy and graces went before us and he stands in the gap for me and you. I thank God for that. Don't you thank God? But he's sovereign and he's always looking out for me and you. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 38 and 39. And Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go. He made an attempt to go. He, he got up to go. But notice what he said. He, 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 he strapped all this weight on. All this thing that Saul relied upon. Saul had used it in battle. Saul had confidence in it. And he placed it on a man that had no confidence. Look what David said. He assailed to go. For he had not proved it. He got up to go, but it just didn't feel right. He's put it all on. He's girded the sword on, but he gets up and the Spirit of God checks him. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to talk to us this morning. Let me finish reading my scripture and then I feel the Holy Ghost of God in this place. He started to go, amen, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put 
Listen, David put them off him. He laid it aside. And, and my title this morning is, I'll not trade my faith for Saul's armor. I'll not trade in what I know for something somebody else is trying to give me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I do love you this morning. Lord, you've been faithful to me in my household. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, time and time again, day in and day out, Lord, you always are my provider. You're my helper, Lord. And I thank you for And I pray, God, that you would move upon us today, Lord. We need your anointing in this house, Lord. I can't do anything without you, Lord. I don't even want to to, to attempt anything, God, without your anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, I stand in need today. Touch me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, God. Hide me behind this cross, Lord, that Jesus be lifted up, that he may be glorified, that he may be honored in this service today, Lord. I pray, God, that you would arrest every heart that's in this place, God, that you would anoint the ears to hear and the hearts to receive every word that comes out of my mouth. God, let it be anointed like Samuel, God, that it won't fall to the ground, but it finds a place wedged in that heart, God, that it finds that fertile soil, Lord, that it may come forth and they be fruit from it, God. I pray, God, that you would touch us in the house, God, if there's any lost souls in this place, God, that you would save them today. If there are any sick folks among us, God, that you would raise them up, that you would heal them, God. If there's anybody bound, God, that you would set them free, that you would break those chains of bondage, God. I pray, God, that you would move among us, God, today, and we'll be careful to give you glory and give you honor in this house today. For, Father, we are here because of you, Lord. We are here because of your precious blood. We're here because you've given us this great opportunity, and we love you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'll not trade my faith for Saul's armor. I'll not give up what I know is true for something that I have not tested. Amen. We must understand that this story started prior till we get to this chapter and we'll get in that in just a moment. But we must have to understand that there's something about this situation that David is just tending the flock. Amen. That his daddy had put him over. Amen. If you will, he's on the back 40 at the house. And and in chapter 16, we recognize that that the prophet of God's been told, hey, you gotta go down to Jesse's house because I'm about to anoint the next king of Israel and I need you to carry your oil with you, amen. And so the man of God is on a journey and he goes back to Jesse's house and as he enters that house, he said, God has sent me to anoint your household. There's somebody coming out of your loins that's gonna be the king of Israel and God's wanting to put his anointing, his stamp of approval on them and he said, where's your boys And so Jesse gets his boys and he parades them, if you will. He brings them before the man of God. And the firstborn comes in. Oh, he's he looks good. He's handsome. He's a little taller and broader than the rest of them. And he looks like he's kingly. Amen. And the man of God rose up and he thought this must be him. And God said, no, I have rejected him. He's not the one. I thought about that, that sometimes this world and maybe church folks at a time and time again look at somebody else and they say hey they're going somewhere in God that they just got something they got the charisma about them they got the statue about them it looks like that they're called and maybe God's going to do something special and and before you know it they're all somewhere else doing something else uh, rather than what God has called them to amen and I don't know about you but when they looked at me brother they said he ain't going to amount to much Uh, there ain't nothing about him that is worthy of anything but I thank God that my father in heaven looked at me and he didn't look at me that way brother Jamie but he said I've chosen him even though he's in the world I'm calling him out of this world just like our father said about Paul it was in the New Testament which was Saul he said he told Ananias he said you got to go to him because I've called him to do a work for me he doesn't know it yet but he's been called and appointed amen 
And so David has no idea he's on the back 40. He's somewhere else tending to the few sheep that his father put him over. And the man of God's at his house ready to anoint somebody to be king. Amen. And the first birth order comes in and God rejects him and he brings another one in. Adonai, I believe it was, the second one that come in. And God said, no, no. And, and, and Samuel's thinking about it. I know that he's just like me and you. He's felt the touch of God. He He's heard when God spoke to him as a young boy. And so he knows the voice of his father. And his father spoke to him and said, no, you can't look on the outside because I don't look at the outside. I'm looking at the heart of the individual. And so I want to challenge us this morning, amen, that God's looking at our heart. He knows what's inside of us because he's put it there, amen. And he's looking at us and he's asking me and you this morning, are you going to trust the faith that you have? that I put inside of you. In 2 Corinthians, it tells us, I believe it's chapter 4, it says that he's put that spirit of faith in one of us. Amen. In every one of us, we've got that spirit of faith. And so he's asking us this morning, are you going to trust the faith I put inside of you? Amen. I'll not trade my faith for Saul's armor. And so as these young men are paraded before Samuel, and the man of God is sitting there and they've brought him through one time. And he looks at Jess and he said, do you have another? Is there another in your household? And the Bible says, if you read this story, that they brought him through a second time. He said, he's not here. Do you have another? Oh, yeah. Oh, David. Oh, what was I thinking? Dave. David. Go get him. And the man of God said, you know what? We're not going to sit down till he gets back. We're not going to take a rest. We're not going to just set at ease because God sent me here on business. And I believe in this house this morning that God has sent us here on business. Amen. That God's calling you and I, that there's something about the calling that he's placed on mine in your life, that he's wanting to carry us to a place, but he's got to move us out of the place that we're at. Amen. And so they go after David and they go to the field and I believe that messenger got out there and he said, the man of God's at your daddy's house. Amen. He's a peculiar kind of feller, but you need to come see what he's asking about. Amen. And so they run back to the house and they get there and just as soon as he walks in the door Samuel rose up God said rise and anoint him amen take your hole and anoint him verse 13 of chapter 16 said like this and Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward there was something about that anointing from, ran from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and the word of God said Said from that day forward, something changed about his life. He was different. But he sent him back to the sheepfold. Amen. But dad, I got fresh oil in my hair. So I'm go back to the sheep. Go back to where I, I sent you. Do what I've called you to do. Do what I've appointed you to do. And so he's went back to the sheepfold. And that's what we find in chapter 17. At the first part of that chapter, it talks about that David, his father came to him and said, son, I want you to go check on the boys. These three of your elder brothers are in war with the king Saul. I want you to go check on them. Take this bread, this cheese, and take these provisions to them and check on them and see, make sure that they still have that vow that they've given me, that they still standing for the faith, that they still walking in the way that they should and so he sends David almost as a messenger boy and so David is doing everything that he's commanded to do he's obedient and I think about Joseph we see the story of Joseph how the, everything that happened to him he was still faithful to God even when his family threw him in the pit and even when he was sold into slavery he was still faithful to God amen he, I'm sure that he was human I'm sure he questioned and wondered God what you're up to I don't know how this is going to turn out but my 
faith in you, God. It's been tried and tested, but I know from assurance, God, you're going to carry me through everything that I face. And Joseph wound up in Potiphar's house, falsely accused when that woman tried to sleep with him. And he said, no, de- no deal, devil. I'm not going to take part of that. That's not my characteristics. Not, not, that's not who I am. What God's called me to, he rejected sin. And because of that, he found himself in a prison, put in a, in, in a prison, separated, hey amen, from everybody else. But you know what God did? Because of his faithfulness, he found favor in that prison. He found favor of God in every place that he was at. Why? Because he had faith in the most high God, knowing that God would take care of him regardless of his situation. Oftentimes you and I, we get in the struggle or the battle of something that's going on in our life, our family situation, and we get pressed to the point. And I believe that there is a testing of mine and your faith. We must hold on to that faith with everything inside of us and tell that devil, you know what? I'm not going to try any other means. I know what works in my life and my faith works. It's never left me down. It's never discouraged me. It's never called me to fail God because at that moment of darkness I know that my God will deliver he'll move in mind in your situations if we trust him our faith will carry us through the trial our faith will carry us through every battle Amen. It's the faith that you and I must rely on. The same faith that God, he's, the Bible said he's given us everyone a measure of faith. You've got enough faith to get saved. You've got enough faith to get healed. You've got enough faith to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You've got enough faith to walk through every trial. But pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the situation of my trial. I don't care what it is. Amen. I don't care how big the Red Sea is. There is one that parts the Red Sea and makes dry ground where there is nothing but mud. He can walk on the water if he has to. Whatever God wants to do, he'll do it. And you and I must hold on to him and have faith in what God can do. There is nothing too hard for our Lord. Hallelujah. And so in the beginning, as David is anointed of all and his father sends him to check on the brothers and he gets there. And for 40 days, the army of Israel, even the king, is hiding from the enemy. Goliath is toning them, making fun of them, making fun of their God. And because of his stature and his verbal abuse, if you will, they cowered down away from the enemy. For 40 days, they've sat there fearing something that's just making noise. The Bible said that Satan goes about Roaring as a lion, imitating something that he is not. There ain't but one line in the Bible. The line of the tribe of Judah. And he came the first time as a lamb, but when he shows up a second time, he's going to be that lion with authority. He's going to rule this world with an iron, the Bible said. Whoa, a rod of iron. That's my God. That's my King Jesus. Amen. 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 And so he goes. And here the children of Israel is hiding behind every rock, every tree, in a place just fearing. Their kneecaps are bumping against one another. Amen. They're scared to death. They won't even go out and challenge the enemy because they don't want to engage something because they're fearful of it. Amen. What about fear in our society? Has anybody seen fear lately in the last 18 to 24 months? Anybody seen fear in our society? That's all that's plastered across the TV. If you watch that mess, I'm telling you, turn it off. Amen. And social media, turn it off if you have to. You and I don't need to pump that fear inside of our spirit. We're not to have a spirit of fear, but that of power. Amen. Of love and a sound mind. That's the Trinity, folks. I don't know if you recognize that. He said he's given us that spirit of power of God Almighty and of love. That is Jesus Christ. And that sound mind is that Holy Ghost anointing that comes in the midnight hour. Amen. When fear tries to creep in, I can call on my Savior and that Holy Ghost baptize me one more time from the top of my head to the soles of my feet and the peace that surpasses all understanding. It shall. It shall. Hallelujah. It is that that God wants us to hold on to is the faith that he's given me in you. Amen. 
I have it, you have it. Amen. How are we, how are we ex- using that faith in our life? Have we packed it up, put it on a shelf somewhere? Have we placed it in a place that we're no longer using it because fear has creeped in our life? I'm telling you, I'm telling you this morning, if we get a hold of this message today, that God's birthed in my spirit. Amen. I believe I'll hold on to my faith. I'm not about to trade in my faith for any of Saul's armor, for what this world is telling me and you to do. This world is constantly trying to dictate us and tell us what we're going to do and ain't going to do. But I tell you what, I stand upon God's word and I stand upon what thus saith the Lord. And this world can go to hell in a handbasket if it wants to, but I believe I'll stand with my Jesus. He's going to take me home soon and it ain't going to be too long. I'm about to leave this world and I must have faith. I must have faith. I must allow him to help me. David comes in this camp and his brothers mock him, make fun of him. Where's your little sheep? Who did you leave your little sheep with? You've done left that little bit of thing. Well, yeah, God's called me to do something a little bit bigger. I'm a message boy now. My sheep are taken care of. Well, can I tell you, my sheep's taken care of while I'm gone this week, Brother Jamie. I've left them in good hands. I'm a messenger today. I'm like little David. I'm a little ruddy, a little rough to look at. Amen. That'd be all right. I come with a message this morning to tell you, don't trade that faith in for anything this world is telling you to compromise on. Don't trade that faith in. That Don't compromise with anything. Don't allow the devil to have any foothold because if he, you give him a foothold, he's going to take a country mile and he's going to dictate to you. He'll build a stronghold in your life that you can't get him out of unless God helps you. Amen. You and I don't need to compromise in this area, in this time, in the life that we're living today. We need to get a hold of God with everything in us and get on an altar before God. Plant our face in the carpet if we have to and call on the name of the Lord. He's going to deliver. He's going to set free. He is the only one that can. He's the one that we must trust in. He is my faith, my hope of glory, the hope of my salvation. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my supplier. He is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. My supplier. He'll meet every need that you and I have. I'm going to trust him with everything in me he is my faith this world is trying to tell us that we must trust in these guidelines these certain things that we must trust in the God that we serve I've had recently I've had recently in the last 18 months people to ask me do you still think God heals I've never doubted it Do you still believe in that book? More than ever. It's fulfilling all around us. If your eye peepers ain't open, you better open them up. If you're not seeing in the spiritual realm, you better be looking, amen, because God's showing himself. And I don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East. You don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East, but God's setting everything up for Ezekiel 38. And I don't know what's going to transpire there, but God does because it's right on his time scale. It's right on his timeline. God has an appointment, amen. And you and I must keep that appointment. He said it's appointed unto man once to die and after that judgment. And so you and I are, are in God appointment book. Amen. We're going to meet him face to face. And folks, I want to meet him with clean hands and a clean heart. I want my faith to be real. I want to hold on to God with everything in me. He asked, will I find faith when I return? I say, yes, Lord. Here I am, God. I have faith in you. You are my helper. You're my deliverer. You're about to take me home. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. And they mocked David. They said, where's your sheep? You just come out here to make trouble, boy. And I like the question that he posed to them. Is there not a cause? I want to ask you, have you got mad enough with the devil yet? In our denomination, they saying that up to 40% of the church members have left since COVID. 40% walked away from God when they should have been running to Him. 
Folks, I don't know if you've recognized, but you're looking at the remnant. You're looking at the remnant that God's about to pour his spirit out on. In the last days, he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. There's a remnant that he's going to pour his glory in. He's going to pour his anointing in. I'm telling you what, God anointed that man of God to preach last night. I thought he was going to walk on air. Amen. That anointing was real this, this morning, yesterday morning, tonight. What is God doing, Brother Jamie? He's getting his remnant ready. He's getting his bride ready. He said, clean it up, boys and girls. You're about to come home. Get those garments clean, pure white. Amen. Man, I don't want to stain on my garment, amen. I don't want to stain on my spirit, on my on my heart, on my mind. I don't want to be tied to anything in this world. And David said, is there not a cause? Is there not something that's churning inside of you and I? Is there not something? Why are you hiding behind that rock? Why are you hiding behind? Why are you cowarding to the things of this world? Why are you afraid of what hell has said to you? Why are you, why are you afraid of what Goliath has spoken about you and about your God? Why don't you get some Holy Ghost? boldness and rise up and say is there not a cause my God is still on the throne he's able to move he's able to help me and you he's able I'm telling you what I'm telling you Woo! glory to God and David said is there not a cause boys what's wrong with you your wood's wet you need to dry it out you need a fire burning inside of you a fire shut up inside these bones that's about to explode out I'm telling you you and I need to get in that place in that relationship with God and say my faith matters it is faith above fear it is faith over fear my faith will dominate because I know the God that I serve serve. Hell may come against me and that'll be all right, but God's going to take me to the other side. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I know my God is sovereign and he's going to take me through to the other side. What are you talking about, preacher? He is the hope that I hold on to. He is my faith. Everything within me and within you, you need to go to hold of God and say, God, regardless of what comes my way, regardless of what I face tomorrow, I know you're sovereign and you're going to help me. you going to move in my behalf. You're going to walk with me. You're going to talk with me. You're going to take care of me. Because he'll do that very thing. Is there not a cause? I believe it was David. We know the Psalms. All the Psalms that he wrote and how that he had expressed his love for God. I believe that all those years that he was out there tending those flocks. He was worshiping the Lord. There was something that changed after the anointing. There's something that changes after the infilling of the Holy Ghost. After the anointing of God. It changed in his life. And he told his brothers and those that was around. He said, how can you allow this man Defile the living God Almighty. How can you allow this man to tear down our God? And he said, I'll challenge him. I'll take him. Word got back to the king. They run and got the king and told him. He said, bring him to me. He goes before King Saul. King Saul said, they tell me you're taking this challenge. And he said, yes. But I like what he said, the testimony that he said. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. You know what he was telling King Saul? My experience with my God tells me that my God will not fail. What he did for me yesterday and the day before, he's about to do for me today. Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the faith that you and I need to have is knowing that my God cannot fail. 
that your God cannot fail. That regardless of the situation, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter the trial. It doesn't matter how loud the devil screams at me and you. My God is still sovereign. It doesn't matter who comes against me and you. It matters that I'm still trusting my God. It doesn't matter the health issues that may plague my body. I'm still trusting my God. He's still my healer. He's still my supplier. He's still my savior. He's the baptizer. Amen. He's the one that comes through in the midnight hour when I am rejoicing in him. When anxiety comes upon me, I can begin to praise my Lord and the Holy Ghost fall on me and anxiety has to leave. It has to flee. Why? Because my God is sovereign. He's all knowing. He's all powerful and he will help me in you. For I am the Lord God that shall deliver you. I will help you in this hour if you will have faith in me. Don't trust the things of this world. Don't trust the promises of men. But trust what my word has spoken to you. Stand upon it for it will not be moved, saith God. Will you lift your hands in this house this morning? I'm telling you that the God that you and I serve is able to meet every need in this house and every need in this city, every need in this county, every need in this nation, every need in this world. If people would look to him in faith and trust that God is able to move. Amen. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for hearts that are trusting in him. What did he say about David? He's a man after my own heart. Why? Because David had faith and confidence in the Lord. He trusted the God that he served. Did he mess up? Yes, he did. But I'm thankful to God that that illustration that God didn't cast him out and throw him in the trash heap because he did the same thing for me. Every time that I fail God with a bad attitude or saying the wrong word, I'm not talking about a curse word, but just having a wrong spirit, the Holy Ghost checks me and I confess my sin and say, God, have mercy on my mess up. Hell, he's faithful and just to forgive Give me of all of my unright. Aren't you thankful that God hadn't thrown me and you aside, hadn't cast us in the trash heap, but he's sovereign. He's able to move in mind in your need. He can help us. He can forgive us. He can move in whatever trial that you and I face in, whatever Goliath stands before us. David knew right well that that lion and bear came out to take them sheep, them little lamb that he loved dearly. He had spent his life just tending to them, taking care of them, providing and protection for them and doing whatever they needed, feeding them, watering them, taking care of them. And Brother Jamie, that's what you're doing to this sheepfold that's here at uh, Middleburg Church of God. Amen. And, and because of your love for your sheepfold, God's going to bless you. He's going to help you. And so David, like us, uh, was faithful to God and what God called him. Wherever God put him, he knew that my God is still in control. Yes, I've been anointed for king, but I never see a time that David grumbled because because he wasn't sitting on a throne. He was faithful to God even when the enemy was pursuing him and trying to take him out. Yes, there was one time that he got discouraged and the thing that come out of his mouth said that surely King Saul's gonna overtake me and kill me. But God checked his spirit and he put the ephod on and he went back to his prayer closet and he got back in the presence of God and he called out to his father and he said, will you help me? And God told him, I'll be there son I'll deliver you I'll set you free I'll keep you from your enemy he'll do me and you the same way we see throughout the Old Testament when David's story is just coming out of the pages of God's word that we see that oftentimes God moved in his behalf first chronicles chapter 14 when David's king the Philistines come out to try to conquer the nation. David went before God because he knew protocol. Have we forgotten protocol? Have we forgotten what happens? Sickness comes in, we call a doctor. 
Doctors do help. But there's a, a master that we need to be calling on first. The light bills do, and I don't have enough money in the checking account. We begin to call friends and neighbors. Can I borrow 10 here, 5 there, whatever, to meet my need? Maybe we need to call the master. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, the one that has never failed me. Whenever there's a crisis, a situation in our family, and we go and get counsel from the brethren and sister, and they gossip more than they counsel us. And we feel worse when we, after we leave there than we did when we got there. Maybe we should have called on the master. Amen. Maybe we should have engaged that faith in our Lord and said, God, you already know my situation. You already know the trial that I'm in. And God, I know that you're going to prevail because you've never failed me. You've never let me down. You've always been a conqueror. You've always supplied my every need. I'm asking you this morning have we traded in our faith for something that Saul was trying to give us have we traded in that hope that we used to rely on the old way that we used to walk when we first got saved and we prayed about everything prayed about a parking lot at Walmart when we went there God if you will bless me let me park up front I don't have to walk three miles amen and all of a sudden you get there to the front door and somebody's just backing out you pull right in the just the favor of God why because you ask him and he cares about you amen because you have that connection with him you're his child amen where have we forgot about the faith what are you talking about preacher is that crazy no I believe in living that way that everything that I face I call on the name of the Lord not because I'm a wimp but because I am his child and he's covered me with his blessings he's covered me with his favor he's covered me with his precious blood I believe I'll trust in him he's given me that faith in my heart and I'm going to utilize it in every asset in my life. I'm going to trust my God. Amen. He is my helper. So I will rely on him. David inquired of God, shall I go up against the Philistines? First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 10. And then First Chronicles chapter 14, and 14 and 15, they come back. The devil ever come back to you? You ever rebuked him in 15 minutes he's back? Or maybe another devil tempting you some other way? Is he relentless? Are you relentless? Are you as relentless as he is? Or do we surrender and hide behind a tree and a rock? Because Goliath has showed up. Are we getting in a place of fear? Is it safe to come out? Has he left yet? Is he, is he gone? I'm praying that this morning in this service, something begins to rise up in me and you. And we start saying, is there not a cause? You feel what I feel? Is there not a cause? Do you feel what I feel? Do you feel what I feel? Do you feel what I feel? Is there not a cause? There's faith rising up in me. Is there not a cause? Is there's not? Is God not doing something? Amen. Among his church folks. Amen. Among the remnant that's still loving God and faithful to the house of the Lord. Do you not feel that? Do you feel God in the house? Amen. Do you feel God stirring something in your spirit? Is there not a cause? Is there not something stirring inside of mine in your spirit that God's about to do something and I don't know what it is but there's a stern in the spiritual atmosphere that God's about to do something supernatural. I don't know what it is but I trust my Lord and every time I feel this sensation in my spirit I say God do it. Do it God. Do it. Do it Lord. Do it God. Do it God. I don't know what you're doing but do it God. I feel you Lord. I feel your presence. I get out of bed sometimes in the morning and I feel that way. Amen. And it's not even Sunday morning but I'm talking about maybe Thursday 
Thursday or Thursday afternoon before I go to bed, I feel something just churning in my spirit and I say, do it, God. Do it, whatever you're going to do, God. I feel if you're going to do something in this season, God, don't do it without me. Lord, let me be in the middle of it. I believe that David walked out on that field and said that that day, God, you're about to do something, Lord. Let me be a part of what you're going to do. And he told him, said, go, boy, and get five smooth stones. You're about to engage the enemy. I'm about to give you deliverance. That's what he told King Saul. He said, just like he did the bear and the lion, he's going to hand this Philistine over to me. You and I need to conquer the enemy, amen, in the spiritual world and say, you know what? I'm trusting my God. I'm getting my prayer closet cleaned out again and moving them cobwebs out. I'm getting in relationship, right relationship with God. I'm getting in my own my knees one more time and I'm building this faith up and I'm trusting in my God. I'll not trade my faith in for Saul's armor. I'll not give up what I know works for something I've never tried. In the midnight hour when my babies were sick, my wife woke me up and said, the baby's running a temperature. We prayed. God moved. Temperature left. The midnight hour when panic attacks would come, my baby daughter sitting right there, she can testify to the fact He'll come in like a flood, tormenting her with anxiety. You know what we did? We run to the hospital. She couldn't breathe. On the way to the hospital, we began to pray. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost came in that car. All five of us speaking in tongues. You know what happened to anxiety? It flew to coop. It can't stay with the power of God. I'm telling you, fear cannot coexist with the Holy Ghost of God. We're either fearing or we're faithing. And I want to challenge us this morning. If we've been drug around by fear, by, like, and, and he can't drag me around by the hair of my head, but some of y'all he can. But if fear's been dragging you around by the hair of your head, it's time that you say, devil, that's enough. Is there not a cause? I feel something rising up in me, in my spiritual man or woman. I feel the Holy Ghost of God check me. No longer, devil. I'm not, I'm not giving in to your fear. I'm standing upon God's word. You may have a weapon that I'm not familiar with. It may be like that giant that had the new sword in the word of God, but I'm telling you, hell comes with new battle plans. But I'm telling you, God's got a superior battle plan. And he's asking us, call on me. In that moment, just like Jeremiah 33 and 3, if you call upon the Lord, what do you think he's going to do? Sit there and watch you in trouble? No, he's going to show up and show out in your life. He's going to give you help if you call upon the Lord. If you'll trust him, he is the deliverer. He is the one that helps. Again, the enemy comes. Philistines are back. He goes before the Lord and God tells him, Son, how about you just waiting by the mulberries? Okay, God, whatever your plan is. He said, when you hear the rustling in the top of the mulberry trees, then you move forward. What was he saying? My arsenal of angel armies. The captain of the host, if you will, the one that Joshua met with a sword drawn. He's leading my army against your enemy. And this time, I'm going to fight the battle. You won't have to do nothing but just show up and get the glory. Amen. And I'm telling you in this house this morning, sometimes he requires us to engage the enemy, but there's times that God said, I'll go before you and I'll fight this battle for you. I see that you're weary. I see that you're tired. I see that you're frustrated. I see that you're just heavy laden. And sometimes he speaks to us and that's why it's very crucial that you and I find a prayer closet just like David did. Put that ephod on. 
on. That prayer shawl on. What's that talking about? That's a mantle of worship. That I get in the presence of God and I stay there for some time. I don't just pray. Folks, I've tried to pray with them before when they come to the altar. And before you get down and lay hands, they done like a pop tart out of a toaster. They all the way back to their seat again like, hey, how did you get any help? You just bend a knee and get up and walk off. No, I think we need to spend some time in the presence of the Lord. How do you expect God to move in your behalf when you and I just want God instantaneously attached to mind in your life? No, he wants a relationship with you. He wants communion with you. He wants intimacy with you. David already had that relationship built before he ever walked out on the field with Goliath. It's important that you and I have that relationship built with God. He said, when you hear sound in the mulberry trees, then go out and I will give you deliverance. Zechariah, if you will, turn with me to Zechariah chapter 3 and I'm closing. Nelly, if you'll come to the piano. Zechariah chapter 3. Beginning of that chapter, we see that Joshua, the high priest, is standing before the Lord. But you know what that scripture says? And Satan's standing at his right hand to resist him. He's standing before the Lord. Does not the Bible say that Satan is the accuser of the brethren? He's accusing the high priest, Joshua. Joshua is called of God, anointed of God. And you know what he's accusing him of? He's got filthy rags on. He's not worthy to be in your presence. He's not worthy to stand where he's standing. He don't have the ability to be here. But you know what the Bible said in that scripture? The Lord looked at Satan and said, the Lord rebuke you. In other words, shut your trap. Close that pie hole. If you want to be South Georgia term, zip it up, Fred. You know what Nehemiah said to Sam Ballot and Tobiah? When they come accusing him, and saying all that you're doing is just to elevate yourself. Wait till the king hears about it. You know what Nehemiah told him? Anointed of God. Shut your mouth. You have no portion in this. You have no words. You can't tell me what my God said about me. You can't tell me about my position with my Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost of God to tell somebody in the house. The devil has come against you and try to put you in a place that, not, that God never intended for you to be. But God is saying by his spirit and anointing this morning that he's rebuking that devil, that he's put you in that place and he's gonna bless you, he's gonna help you if you would just trust in God and have your faith in him. He's the one that elevates. He's the one, the Bible said he is the one that gives promotion. The devil has no say. You might say you have no portion. This is my inheritance. Basically, devil, shut your mouth. See this scripture here where the Lord rebukes Satan. It says you have nothing to say. And then he says, take his filthy garments off. Clothe him with that holy clothing because his iniquity has been passed before me. And he'll clothe him with a change of remnant. Verse 5 said, And I said, Let them set a fair metre upon his head. So they fed, set a fair metre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. There was a proclamation in, chapter, in verse 7. Now listen to what the Word of God said. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, he's talking to the priest, Joshua. He said, if thou wilt walk in my ways, if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house 
and shall also keep my course. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. What's he talking about? He's talking about the angelic host. You're going to walk among angels. If you keep my precepts and obey my word. There's another passage of scripture that says from glories to glories to glories. You see, when God elevates us and moves us to a higher place in him, he never wants us to go back down there. You see, what he's trying to do is get us closer to him where we can have communion with him. That we get above the distractions. That we don't see what hell's doing down here. But we're in the glories. From glory to glory. A higher elevation, if you will. We can see what God's seeing. Amen. And I pray to God that he in this revival this week, this camp meeting, that you and I begin to see in the spiritual realm that God begins to show his glory just like he did Moses. If we desire it, God will show us. Amen. He put him in the cleft of that rock, put his hand over him, and he walked by him. And he, liked, he let him see the hinder part. What are you talking about, preacher? There is a place that we can get in God. We've not done reached. Amen. There is a higher place place and if we desire him he'll make it available for me and you there is a richer place in God a deeper water if you will a deeper place in the Lord if you and I desire it he's going to allow us to be there Peter got a glimpse of it when he said Lord if that be you bid me to come to you He got a glimpse of it. Just for a second. Walked on the water. And what took him under? Fear. What takes us under? Fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear. But that of power. And of love. And a sound. Stand with me this morning. Zechariah goes on to say, talking about Zerubbabel, he began building the temple and then there was a space of time that they did not build. But you know what the Word of God said? You're going to finish the work. And it's not in your strength. For he said it's not by power. Nor by might. But by my spirit. Saith the Lord. In this house today. The Lord's asking me and you. Don't trade your faith in. For the armor of Saul. I don't know about you. But I'm not tested Saul's armor. But I've tested my faith. If you're saved in the house today, you've tested your faith because you trusted in Him to save you. If you're sanctified in the house today, you've tested your faith because you trusted Him with a closer walk. If you feel with the Holy Ghost, you've tested your faith in knowing that He is the baptizer. Amen. And if you've stepped out in faith, then you know the faith. I want to challenge us in this house this morning. These altars are open. And I don't know about you, but I want a higher walk with Him. I want a sweeter place in His presence. I want deeper waters to swim in. I'm not, folks, I'm not satisfied with ankle deep water. I'm not satisfied with just my ankles being wet. I want to be able to go out there where the water is deep enough to swim in. In other words, I'm lost in the Holy Ghost of God. I'm lost in His presence. The time doesn't matter anymore. The things of this world has no attraction to me anymore. 
that I could care less about what's out there, but I care more about what's in here. Amen. That I'm more concerned about where he's taking me than where I'm walking around in this world. No, I've got a better place to go. And I'm desiring more of him. These altars are open, if you will. Let's strip these pews this morning and find a place to pray. I don't know about you, but I want a closer walk. I don't want to trade my faith in for anything. I want to hold on to that that God has given me. Lord, today we love you. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that we felt in your house today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And, Lord, I don't want to be tempted and surrender to temptation of the things of this world. But, God, I want to hold fast to that faith that you've given me, that spirit of faith that prevails in my life, Lord. That's what I'm holding fast to. I trust you, God. You're going to meet my need. You saved me. You sanctified me. Filled me with the Holy Ghost. Called me to preach this great God. And Lord, I am indebted to you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I thank you, God. I pray, God of heaven, that you would help us in this place today. I don't know what trials people are facing, but God, you do. And there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. There's not an impossible place for you. You can move in every situation. You can turn it all around, God. You can heal those broken hearts, Lord. You can bind them up. And Lord, put the salve of your spirit in, Lord. And there becomes healing there. Lord, you can touch the mind, the hearts of every individual here. And God, that's watching or listening online. God, there's nothing too hard. Hard for you, Lord. You can do it, Lord. And I'm trusting you, dear God, that you would help everyone in this place. Everyone that hears this message, God, that they recognize there is deliverance. That there is help. And I will trust in him. I'm not going to put my faith in the things that this world has tried to prescribe to me. But no. I'm holding on to the foundation the word of truth and I know if I hold on to that the word of God that it will not lead me astray but there is a foundation there that I will be stable even though the waves come crashing in there is a banner that God raises up he'll hold me steadfast and I'm trusting that God that you would do it hallelujah can we pray this morning Can we plead with the Lord, pour out our heart to him today and ask him, Lord, show me the deeper water. Help me find that place that I need to be in. Help me, God, to find that place that I need to be. God, I want to be right in step with you. I want to be walking where you want me to walk. I want to go where you tell me to go, Lord. I want to be obedient to you and that that you're speaking into my heart today. I want to be found faithful, Lord. I want to do that that you've asked me to do. Lord, if there's anyone in the house today that's wrestling with their faith, that fear seems to overcome them. I pray, God, that you would help their unbelief, that you would touch them. Remind them, God, of the things that you've done. Remind them of the deliverance. Remind them of the times, Lord, that you prevailed in their life and the help that you've showed them. And time and time again, Lord, remind them, oh, of your faithfulness, Lord. Just like David did when he walked in that priest's place that day, in that sanctuary, and he asked the priest, do you have a sword? And he goes and brings the Goliath sword out of the closet. I believe that you was telling him, you may be running with fear in your heart, but God is your provider. Just like he provided against Goliath, he's going to prevail against Saul. If you would just trust and be faithful in the calling, if you'll be faithful where God's placed you, If you'll be faithful in the calling that God has placed on your life, there is a day that God's going to deliver you. There is a time frame. There is a schedule on God's table. Lord, I pray that you would help them to recognize, God, that you're about to move in their behalf. That you're about to help them. That you're about to move in their need. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for deliverance. I thank you, Lord, for help. I thank you, Lord, that you are my deliverer. 
I'll not trade my faith. I'll not trade that that I know works. I'll not trade what you've already done for me, Lord, and how you've met my every need. I'll not trade that for an empty promise. Something that I have not proved. But I hold fast to that that I know is true. I hold fast that that I know works. My faith in you. Oh, <laughs>